The closer you get to your goal, the more things will start to make sense, hopefully anyway. So I will leave it up to you to decide if at the end of this video you think what I did so far makes sense or not. Because today I'm gonna show you how I started building the helm for our barge boat. But first, let me show you how we mounted the two outboard motors to the recently finished transoms. The white smudges you see are drips from epoxy resin. Let's unbox these motors once and for all. In case you wonder, I got these second hand, that's why they are slightly different in some areas. A friend is here to help me. I first remove the hood, then attach the crane hook, and while my friend is operating the crane, I will be guiding the motors to their destination. I hold the motor with a strap to prevent it from spinning out of control. Once above the transom plate, my friend gently lowers the engine until it rests upon the transom. And with that, the first motor is already in place. I'm gonna add four bolts to the motor to fix it firmly to the transom plate. Now on with the next one. For this one, because I extended the transoms further outwards, the crane can't reach all the way above the center point of the transom, so I have to push it manually into position. And so yeah, as simple as that, we mounted the two motors. Now just a quick test to see if I can actually lift them all the way up. Being able to do this cost me about a month of additional work, but now I can safely say it was totally worth it. Let's put the hood back on, and then move on to building the helm. I thought about different designs, different shapes and sizes that would be practical. In the end, the size and shape of the helm will be determined by the ceiling height of the main cabin and the space available. I plan to have a total ceiling height of 260 centimeters. So I would first build a platform where to stand on, and then build a rectangular structure on top of that to incorporate the helm. I would build the platform out of steel square tubes, which I ordered pre-cut from a local steel supplier. So let's get started. First I'm gonna build the outer frame by cutting a 45 degree angle into the ends of the corresponding square tubes. For this I'm of course going to use my metal bandsaw, which allows me to make relatively precise cuts fairly quickly. Next I prepare the areas for welding, then I'm gonna first weld together two sides of the frame at a time and only with a few tech welds. I use this table in order to get right angles and to make sure all the sides of the frame are properly aligned between each other. Next I need to figure out a way how to put the frame together, the difficulty being that the frame once assembled is almost the same size as the tent. Eventually, I got it all lined up and after double checking that all the measurements are still correct, I tech weld it all together. Next I'm gonna move this kitty out of the way, so I can continue working. Here I'm attaching the middle bar of the frame. Once again, first with a few tech welds. Now that the main structure of the frame is done, and after making sure all the tubes are on a horizontal plane, I can move ahead and firmly weld everything together. Thankfully I got this tent where I can find shelter from the frequent wind gusts that are blowing at this time of the year. 
And so I was able to achieve a quite satisfactory result, as I will show you in a moment. After a long day of working on the boats, I like to relax by watching a great movie. For this I use ExpressVPN, which allows me to watch movies which normally wouldn't be available in my geographical region. You talking to me? Because Netflix and other online video streaming platforms reserve different content for different geographical territories, we actually only see a fraction of their content while still paying the full subscription fee. So by using ExpressVPN, a so-called virtual private network, our actual IP address will be hidden and instead will be displayed as coming out of one of the over 90 countries available on ExpressVPN servers. ExpressVPN offers super fast speeds optimized for online streaming and can be installed on nearly any type of device. Find out how you can get 3 months of ExpressVPN for free by visiting expressvpn.com slash myfirstboat or clicking the link in the description below. Overall, I'm more than happy with the result. I managed to tweak the settings on the welder to a point where I got hardly any splatter. Every now and then, however, I got these aliens growing out of the weld and I don't really know why. Now with that done, I mark the areas where to attach the supporting bars that are gonna fill up the two wings of the frame. I prepare a total of eight shorter square tubes to be welded into the frame. And I also prepare the areas on the frame for welding. I got a new, slightly larger grounding clamp, hoping that in this way I can improve the quality of my welds. And with that, here we go. Alright, it's starting to look like something. At this point I'm gonna double check if everything is at the right place and all the parts are properly aligned and then I'm gonna weld this firmly together. Now the base of the platform is pretty much finished. Here too, I'm pretty happy with the result of my welding. I feel like the new clamp really did make a difference. A friend came over to help me get the platform onto the deck of the barge boat. Seen from this angle, it appears that all the parts of the platform are perfectly aligned. I'm gonna weld in these triangles into some of the corners to give the entire structure more strength. I first fix the triangles in place with a few tech welds and then I place some more sturdy welds on top. I believe this will be strong enough, so I don't need to fill out the entire area. Next I grind down all the welds, because we want to get an absolutely flat surface on the top of the platform. While I'm at it, I'm gonna grind down the welds on the other side. Next it's time to put some legs on the platform. For this I got a set of slightly larger triangles, so after preparing everything for welding, I put in place the first leg. First I attach the leg itself with a few tech welds and then I weld in the triangles. With the first leg in place, I move on to the next one. The worsening weather conditions by now mid-November make welding with gas more and more difficult. So I decide to switch to stick welding, at least for initially attaching the legs and the triangles. Here are my very first welds with the stick welder, definitely some room for improvement, but I believe I can work with that. Getting these legs attached was extremely challenging and it took me almost two entire afternoons. Here we go for the fourth leg. 
Now with all the four legs attached, I can tell you the most difficult part was to get the legs not only perfectly perpendicular to the platform, but also parallel to each other. And as you can see here, I was more or less successful in that query. The worst deviation being between these two legs here, but that's just a few millimeters, which I can correct for once I attach the legs to the boat. Next I put a tarp over the legs to gain some cover from the strong winds and weld everything firmly together. For this I went back to shield gas as I'm more confident with this method. Finally, I clean everything up with the angle grinder. And then it's time to flip the platform around into its upright position. And so this is more or less what it's gonna look like. Note that at this point I put the platform right in front of the hatch, which I will change later. Now let's see if it works. And it does indeed carry a person. Of course at this point it's still a little wobbly, but overall I'm pretty happy with it. Next I'm gonna build the actual helm structure. First I'm gonna cut four pieces out of a 50 by 50 L profile. These will constitute the four legs of the new structure. The two rear ones are a little bit longer, so that I will get a downward slope into the upper part. Now I can attach the four legs to the platform. Next I will add an L profile between these two legs. I cut it so that it fits precisely into the gap. Then I weld the L profile in place. Next I got a bunch of T profiles cut to different lengths to create the upper kind of ceiling for the helm structure as well as other reinforcements that will be needed. This is of course just another day at the office for the bandsaw. First I weld in the two shorter pieces. For the two longer pieces I need to cut away some parts so that the frame I create in this way will be seamless. Now that the upper frame is done, I can add some more reinforcing welds. Next I prepare two T-profiles that will be welded in vertically. And with that, the frame for the helm is finished. Next I will attach the steering box for the hydraulic steering system. For this I first make a square out of steel flat profiles and here are my first continuous welds with the stick welder. I grind these down and repeat the same on the other side. After making some markings on the square, I cut and grind away the parts I don't need. Then I make the shape aesthetically a bit more pleasing by rounding off the corners. I drill some holes for the bolts of the steering box. And finally, I weld that into place.
And with that, the helm structure is more or less finished. In the meantime, I've added more sturdy welds at the bottom and I rounded off the corners at the upper frame of the helm. And with that, the framework for the helm is finished. As mentioned before, I decided to place the entire platform a bit further back, so here's how we did that. And so now the platform is at its final position. From this we gained this space as additional living area. And so that concludes today's video. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you think of this, what I may have done wrong and what I could do better. Join the My First Boat Community Facebook group to discuss my projects and show us your boat project. Thank you very much for watching till the end and see you in the next video.